my fellow gardeners. I did not do a, a garden tour in August and we are now looking at the middle of September and I thought let's do one more walk around the garden uh, before fall hits and see what exactly is going on. So typically I always start over here with this pot and I'm pretty thrilled with this pot and my favorite flower of the season of the season is the scaviola, this purple scaviola. It's a fan flower from Proven Winners. I planted this in April. It is now the middle of September and it is still just as beautiful as it was, you know, month month or two ago. It's just such a pretty flower. Um the yellow zinnias, which I mentioned quite often through all my videos is still doing pretty good and I did back where this which honestly I don't know what this is I just purchased this this is a perennial I love the color I love the texture and I want to put this out in my beds and I wanted a little bit of height for this pot so I, I purchased this and this replaced um, the angelonia that I had here um, and the angelonia quit blooming probably about three weeks ago or so and so I, I took it out and added this so that I can here in the fall I will take this out and I, I'll plant it in the bed so but I wanted a little bit of height here but just still love this pot I'm moving around to the rose garden over here it's kind of an absolute mess so we have the hydrangeas that are kind of spilling over. We've got the rose bushes that need <laughs> to be cut back. Um, there's a bunch of celosia that I planted last year that's coming up. Looks kind of messy, but I didn't really want to take it out. But it's kind of kind of neat. The um, yeah, you see the pintas over here. The pintas are still doing really, really good. They're over here in the corner. Uh, the red, purple, white, those are still blooming pretty strong here. So, um, really great annual flower. Still the morning glories too, which they're shut right now, but in the morning those open and are, are really, really pretty. So those also did extremely well through the season. Um, back over in this corner, are these beautiful purple petunias which i love the celosia that's grown up around them but um these are just still so beautiful um love them the pentas behind behind it as well as the bubblegum supertunia back in the back i uh we still have over here basil that's growing strong. I need to make some pesto or something. It still smells so good. Uh, over in this pot, which I have another video of kind of, I completely redid this pot. Um, and I wanted to add just more fall color. And I love this pot. It's so fun. I, I kept the grass in there um, from earlier. In the summer, I added some of the brown celosia along with the pretty orange zinnia. That's another scaviola that I added in there, the white. And then back, kind of in between in the middle of the pot is a little Bidens from Proven Winners. Uh, they're, they're brown and yellow and they're so cute and I love them. And then here is, and I wanted to look up the name of this yellow flower here um, that I planted in here. Uh, I'll put the name up on there, but I love this. This is probably my second or third favorite flower of the season. Um, it's just beautiful, but the pot has come together so well. I planted this up a couple weeks ago or so, and it's going strong, and I love, it's just kind of unique different flowers in there. It's really cool um, and looks really good for fall. So, all right, this is the bubblegum Supertunia Vista. As you can tell, it's looking very worn. I plan on going ahead and taking this out here pretty soon and creating more of a fall 
pot. So um, I haven't been giving it near the attention that I need to. And over to the right is the, so this is, this is what I was talking about in my fall pot. This is called Gold Dust. I have no idea how to pronounce this. Mecardonia, Mecardonia, I think. But Gold Dust Mecardonia, it's from Proven Winners. And this is just, I think it's the coolest, prettiest flower. So it does really well in pots. I, I do have it in um, part of my flower bed in the cottage garden. I just planted it. And I'm definitely going to purchase more of this next year um, because it's done so well. So it's really pretty. I had some um, Supertunia Vista Snowdrift in this pot uh, along with some Verbena and I just again kind of stopped uh, paying a whole lot of attention to it and decided hey kind of want to spruce things up with some fall flowers so took some marigolds out of some other pots that we had and moved them over here um, and that's kind of the fun thing to do right now is like what's looking good what's not looking good and so you know we had these in pots with other flowers that weren't looking so great and so we got rid of the other flowers and then didn't want to get rid of these and so you know hey you can plant them in your landscape you know to fill in a spot or so but I thought may as well plant them in here get a little bit of yellow and orange for fall and we transplanted these really just a few days ago and they're, they're looking pretty good. So, kind of neat. So as you can see, this pot with the Gumfrina Lemon Coral Sedum, just looking a little bit tired. I think it's been overwatered. I'm gonna be redoing this pot um, here probably within the next week or so. Um, still love my Gumfrina, I just think that I, I didn't take care of it like I should have. This flower bed over here is uh, full of zinnias, which I love my zinnias. As you know from my previous videos, I love the color. Um, I've always struggled with this bed over the past few years. The zinnias do really well in the back border. Um, nothing does too well in the front border. And so, you know, this time of year with all the zinnias, I love it, uh, but this is always kind of just one of those beds that I have to figure out what exactly I'm gonna do. I did, to kind of fill in a gap, add a pot of the hydrangea that I had on my porch. Um, I'm gonna plant those into the ground this fall. And as you can see, the brown-eyed Susans have completed their blooming. Um, and I will be, I'll actually leave, um, leave those on there. I won't cut that back because I know the birds like them for the winter. Um, so this is this bed. I'm, I'm hoping that maybe next year I do something a lot different. Um, hopefully I get something in here that really, that really works. But in the meantime, I love my zinnias. You know, this bed in the beginning of the summer was filled with tons of cosmos. Uh, the wind came, we had 100 mile an hour winds, blew them all out, and I just started kind of throwing stuff back here. Um, so, it definitely does not look good. Uh, from far away, you can at least still see some flowers <laughs> um, in here, which, you know, on the border, you've got the starlight zinnias. Um, which are so pretty and then I have a couple other the yellow and these um, green zinnias here cosmos um, have come back with the vengeance as you can see they actually look pretty uh, I don't really pay too much attention to the flowers back here sadly but um, um, you know it kind of is what it is I plan on really redoing this bed uh, this fall I kind of want to make it like an all purple and white flower bed. So um, we'll see what happens. But I wanted to give you a glimmer of, you know, I'm, I really do try to uh, work on these flowers. I mean, I, I do work on them a lot, but uh, there are definitely some times where, uh, 
you know, you just kind of throw things together and it is what it is. And that is what this flower bed is. So moving along, this was the flower pot that I had, this beautiful purple angelonia that was like, I don't know, three feet wide. It was beautiful. Um, and I, you know, it, it died back about two, three weeks ago. So I've replaced it with more fallish plants. So we've got some white mums here. Um, along with this cool little, I think this is an annual grass. It looks dead. It's actually not dead. This is what it's supposed to look like, but I thought it was pretty cool for fall. Um, the Wygelia is really starting to grow, so hopefully that this winter it won't die and completely have to regrow from the bottom up. Our crepe myrtles are blooming pretty good. Still, the ones in our front yard have quit flowering or quit blooming, so, but these have still got some pretty flowers on them. I love all of these zinnias. So these are just so fun. They're so fun. I love them. I love all the color. I love the different sizes. I love coming out here and cutting them and making me um, a vase full of flowers every week. I just, beautiful. What's funny is back in here, there is a Rose of Sharon. Um, but you can't see them because the zinnias have taken over. Still have some flowers on the Supertunia. This is a Supertunia latte here, which is pretty. Nine bark still looking beautiful. I love how, I don't know if you can get a shot, but just love how the Gumfriana kind of hangs over the side of the wall. Um, just love it up couple zinnias back there. These red zinnia, I just, these red zinnias are just gorgeous. That color red is so beautiful. I love it up against the white zinnia. I did have some other zinnias here that the wind ended up taking them out um, back in the back, but love the zinnias. This is spider flower, the Cleome, I believe, from Proven Winners. This is I don't know, it's fighting for like second or third place here. Love the height that it gives you. It's a vertical, um, gives you vertical height that doesn't really get too wide. And this is an annual, but this is such a awesome, awesome plant. So I kinda, I love this area right here. I honestly don't remember what I had here that died back. I know I had some marigolds, but something had died back here. And so I just went and got a bunch of zinnias, put them in a pot, and it's kind of filled in the gap here. But um, as I've mentioned many, many times, you know, the zinnias will flower and continue to bloom through fall. So, well, until first frost. So I love the addition of the color here. My nine bark is massive and I love it and it truly makes me want to get the green nine barks and put them somewhere. I don't know where I'd put them but I just love this shrub. Alright, Morgan Frina. I had all Angelonia back here. I still have this one here, this is pretty much what it does out here, I, you know, kind of towards the end of October. Um, towards the end of uh, August into September, they just quit blooming. Um, so I'll end up taking that out, and there's one back here too, but I had about three other in, uh, in through here, and I went ahead and took them out. And this Euphorbia, I had in another pot, and the other flowers weren't doing so well, so I transplanted these yesterday. And just to kind of give it a little bit of color and it's doing pretty good. It's not doing too bad. So from a distance, it looks pretty darn good. And now you can actually see the blanket flower back there. I haven't, it's been uh, <laughs> taken over by the Angelonia. I need to go back there and kind of deadhead it a little bit and it should continue to bloom also um, for several weeks. I have not taken care of this butterfly bush as I should. I need to come back here and kind of clean this up a little bit, but still has some pretty, pretty blooms, flowers on them. I am truly obsessed with the Russian sage. I just, 
it just gives you such a cool dynamic to your flower beds. It's beautiful. Pollinators love it. There's bee on it still. It's going on seven o'clock here. Um, just, I love this stuff. I love it, I love it. Um, of course I love it in contrast to the barberry and this is Atlantana that I had planted. This is actually just one plant and there was massive amount of blooms on it but it's kind of now that it's getting a little bit cooler um, in the evenings it's not doing as well but it's still really pretty it still has some blooms on here so actually lots of little blooms so moving along this way you know I, ha I planted the hibiscus here I was super super excited about it and it is doing better now that it's cooler here in Oklahoma, um, but it, it really didn't do too well. I only would have one to two blooms on daily. It really honestly, if that. So I know that the hibiscus, they do well uh, in wetter soil. And so my plan is to actually take this out and put it over in the bed that um, kind of holds a little bit of water. It's got all those zinnias in it. And see, maybe, you know, fingers crossed, maybe it'll do well there. But um, as you can tell, this is my cottage garden here. And from a distance, you see all my zinnias. Um, and I still have a lot of color here for the middle of September. And most of the color is coming from just different varieties of zinnias. Uh, we have, let's see, we still have, um, what do we have? We have some celosia back here that I planted. We do have some lantana. Uh, we still have um, some uh, petunias, some gumfrina, uh, some vinca. The vinca's done really well, some euphorbia. Um, what else? Some begonias. And so we got a little bit of, still got a little bit of everything for these annuals that are doing pretty well. So my thought is, hey, if they can keep on blooming. I want to, I want to do my best to keep the color for as long as I can. So yeah, back in the back, we have some of the spider flower and that really cool dahlia hybrid. Um, which I planted completely in the wrong spot <laughs> um, and that is an annual but it's just I love the leaf kind of almost black purple with the beautiful yellow flowers I will definitely purchase another one of these next year and plant it kind of closer to so we can see it a little bit better but um, as it got hotter and hotter that that plant did better and better um, in the original, or I think my first, second video, you would have seen up towards my window there um, a bunch of Cosmos. And they just started looking all kinds of bad. So we ended up having to take those out. And so now you can see the coleus back there which is really pretty we actually carried that over from last year in our house we we planted some in a vase and we kept it in a vase going all through the winter into spring and we planted it back out here and it's done really well i purchased more of the spider flowers in white from proven winners about three-ish weeks ago to kind of fill in that space and um you know they're doing really well they are an annual i'm interested in seeing how long they flower for but I've only um, purchased and had in my beds the purple and I was really interested in the white and I love these I will be purchasing lots of these next year um, again just I love the vertical now these are not grown but these will grow to be about three feet uh, in height and really only about a foot and a half or so wide so love the flowers uh, I want to show this. So, so this is the fountain grass here. As you can tell, it's completely dying. Grass, all the grasses, they have like massive roots. And so 
the pot that we have them in, it's not near deep enough. And so I loved it there for a while because it really provided the height and stuff. And the cool thing is, is I will actually let this die and then I will cut these off and I will use these in my fall pots. Um, and I'll leave them in there all, all winter, but I'll kind of, I'll do a video on when I do that. I did this last year with a grass. I let it die all the way back and then I took it out of the pot and then still used a lot of the grass for, um, for the fall and winter pots. So the Wicked Witch Coleus right there, is it not beautiful? I mean, my, it's just gorgeous. I mean, what is that? That has to be three feet. Every bit of three feet, don't you think? Um, love the coleus. So moving along over, a uh, couple more pots here. I had um, Super Tunia, Super Petunia Sharon in here, and it kind of died back. So I threw in a couple more Super Tunia Vistas. I can't remember the name of this one. This is the first time I've actually had it and it's supposed to be amazing. Um, and it is growing. It'll be interesting considering the cooler temperatures, just how well it does, but I figured I'd give it a chance. Um, and then this is a Supertunia Bordeaux over here that, you know, doesn't look fabulous, but still has quite a bit of blooms. So I'll, I'll keep it going here for a while before I change this pot up. Last but not least are these black petunias. Um, they are still producing new flowers. It doesn't look exactly great, but you know, with Halloween coming up, I don't really want to get rid of them. Um, so I think I'm gonna keep them in here for a while. I'm amazed, I planted these in March. They've really, you know, made it a long ways. Um, I did cut them back significantly probably about a month and a half ago or so, but um, I just, I think they're way too cool. And I think that about wraps it up. Thank you so much for joining me for my last summer tour and I'm looking forward to putting out more videos as fall approaches. Have a good one.